Okay. Now, constant pressure cycle. Now, this part here, we will be looking into the examples. So, the example here is an uh, ideal constant pressure cycle using overall pressure ratio of 8.1. I will show you later on how you how you consider the 8.1. 8 to 1, sorry, not 8.1, 8 to 1. The volume ratio of adiabatic compression, that is for the compression ratio, is 6 to 1. The pressure, volume, and temperature at, of the air at the beginning of adiabatic compression. The beginning of the adiabatic compression here. Okay, so they have given us the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. So that is the beginning of the adiabatic compression. So when you refer to the PV diagram, so you can see this point one to two here, okay, as you refer to this path, is actually referring to an isentropic compression process. So when you say at the beginning, that means point one. So the pressure is 100 kPa, the absolute volume. So you can see the volume that I put here is in meter cube. Okay, so that is 0 0.084 meter cube. And the temperature is 28 degrees C. So that is on your TS diagram. So at your point 0.1 here, so this temperature here should be 28 plus 273. Okay, so now, the question asks us, the question has given us the gamma is 1.4, the CP is 1.006. If you were to determine or determine the CV, then you will have to take the equation of CP over CV equals to gamma, so which you should have learned earlier. So gamma is actually the ratio of CP to CV. Or you can use the relationship where you have R is equal to CP minus CV. Okay, so now so on the table, I have pressure P1 is 1 bar. So P1 and P4 is the same. Because here from 4 to 1, from 4 to 1, okay, is a constant pressure process. So P1 and P4 should be 1 bar. Okay, and then if given that the volume is 0 0.084 meter cube, given that the temperature is 28 degrees Celsius, so plus 273, you have 301 Kelvin. So based on the adiabatic compression ratio, which is given in the question, yeah, the adiabatic compression ratio is 6 to 1, and your compression ratio or the compression process is actually refers to 1 to 2, point, state point 1 to state point 2. So from state point 1 to state point 2, and since we have known that the volume at point 1 is 0 0.084 meter cube, so you take V1 is equal to 6 times V2. So if you want to find V2, then you have to take uh, V1 divided by 6. So that is 0 0.084 divided by 6. So you have 0 0.014 meter cube. So you put it into the table. Okay, so that is your V2. <coughs> so what we need to do now is to fill up the table first before we solve the problem. So now that is where we stop just now. Okay, your V2 of 0 0.014 meter cube. So now we are on the way to find out our P2. So from the isentropic equation, this is the isentropic equation between pressure and volume. So that is when you take pressure and volume, it should be power of gamma only. Okay. So from there, we know P1 is 100 kPa. V1 over V2, that is your compression ratio is 6. And gamma is given in the question as 1.4. So you have your P2 as 1229 kilonewton per meter square, or that is 12.29 bar. Okay, 12.29 bar. So you put in your P2 here. Okay, so that is 12.29 bar. Follow? Okay, and since P2 and P3 is the same, because P2 and P3 here are constant pressure, 
So you have P3 also is 12.29 bar. Okay, 12.29 bar. So then the next one is to find out this, the temperature T2. So the temperature T2, then you have to use the isentropic compression again based on 0.1 to 2 isentropic. So you have to use this formula. But this formula here is between temperature and volume. Previously, it was pressure at to volume. Pressure to volume. Okay, now we are looking at temperature to volume. So we have T2, okay, is equals to 616 Kelvin. 616 Kelvin. So 616 Kelvin, you put it here. So that is your 616 Kelvin. Okay, 616 Kelvin. Then the next one, okay, we know that the overall volume ratio. The overall volume ratio. No, that is not. Sorry, uh, V4 equals to 6V3 because that is also another volume ratio. But then we know that the volume ratio and the uh, compression ratio here would be the same. So we can take uh, V4 is equal to 6 times V3. So we got our V3 is equal to 0 0.0187. Okay. Then based on your ideal gas law, this is your ideal gas law. That is PV equals to MRT. So you have mass times uh, this one bar and then this volume here is 0 0.084 and then the temperature is 301 and the specific gas constant here is 0 0.2871 so you got a mass of 0 0.0972 kg so because the volume given here is in meter cube, so that is why we need to find out the mass. So after that, you will be able to find out your T3. Okay, that is your T3. By substituting your pressure and volumes. Then you consider state point 3 to 4, which is also an isentropic process. Now, how to see the isentropic process? So now from here, you can see, you can see here, 3 to 4 is a straight vertical line. So that is where your isentropic is, okay? That is where your isentropic process is, 3 to 4. So, and then we are to find T4 because the remainder here is your T4, that is 420. So we have to find 4, sorry, 402. So we can use this relationship here between temperature and volume for isentropic process. So you get your 402 Kelvin. So after that, then you can find out V4 to V2, now, V4 to V2 is your overall volume ratio that is given in the question. So you can see here, we always refer to the outermost and the innermost volume of your PV diagram based on the volume. When they say overall volume ratio, then you refer to the outermost volume and the innermost volume. If they refer to uh, overall pressure, then you have to refer to the outermost both pressure line. So in this case here, that is here to here. So your four and one. So that is your overall volume ratio. Okay, that is equals to eight. So from there, you can find out your V4 of 0 0.112, okay? So we know that heat supply is equals to MCP. This is a constant pressure process. So you can include M because once you include M, that means the heat supply that you got here will be in kilojoules, not in kilojoules per kg anymore. So it should be in kilojoules. Okay, it should be in kilojoules. Then to find your heat rejected the same way, that is MCP T4 minus T1, that is between 0.4 to 1, where you can see it is a constant pressure cooling process. Constant pressure line 4 to 1 as you can see on your PV diagram 4 to 1 is actually a constant pressure line. Can you see that? Okay, so you can find out your heat rejected based on constant pressure. That is also in as uh, kilojoules per kg. You can see that is 
in kilojoules per kg, okay? Oh, sorry, in kilojoules without the kg because you multiplied it with, uh, by the mass. So to find out net work is just simply to, you are taking the heat supply minus heat rejected. Okay, and then to find out the thermal efficiency, you can use the volume ratio or you can use the pressure ratio formula also. RP, power of gamma minus 1 over gamma. Or you can use, okay, so you can actually find out the thermal efficiency based on this formula also. Okay, 1 over RP, that means the pressure ratio to the power of gamma minus 1, that is a 1, yeah, over gamma. Here we are using volume ratio, means So that is a slight difference. Okay, you can use that formula also, here, this one, to find out the uh, thermal efficiency. Or you can use um, the uh, network out over heat supply. That also you can still find out the thermal efficiency. Okay, so that is found 51.2%. Then the next part, they ask us to find Carnot efficiency. Now remember, Carnot efficiency is always defined between two temperature limits. So, but then here, in this question here, we have four temperature points, four temperatures. So how to determine the Carnot efficiency? So what you need to do is to consider which one among the four temperature, which one is the lowest and which one to be the highest. So you take the TL over TH. Now in Carnot cycle, your TH, okay, you have only TH and TL. You have only two temperature because they are undergoing two temp uh, constant temperature process or two isothermal process. So it is limited only to two temperature. But then this is a constant pressure process, not a can uh, sorry, not an isothermal process, okay? Or uh, this is a constant pressure cycle, not a Carnot cycle. Okay, so there are there will be four different temperatures. If you were to refer to Carnot cycle, it's only two temperature. So if I want to find Carnot efficiency here, then I must take one minus among the four temperatures that you have got, choose the lowest one divided by the highest ones, then times one hundred percent. So you've got sixty three point four percent, and then that is a gross work expansion. Now, to work out your gross work expansion, then you have to see your PV diagram. Actually, uh, when you refer to these reversible uh, processes or reversible cycles, internal reversible cycles, it is better for us to refer to non-flow energy equation. And the proving part of the questions I've given on the board, okay? So, but then uh, it's too little space for me to write it here. Okay, so you can see that gross work expansion based on the area area under the process path of 2 to 3. This area here, this area here. Okay, that is the height P2 times the base that is V3 minus V2. Okay, so that refers to the area here. Okay, then the next area that is this is actually referring to the area of below the curve of 3 to 4. 3 to 4. That you have to use your integration method to find the area under the curve for this part here. Okay, so you will be able to find out your both expansion process, the work done for both your expansion process. You just substitute your pressure, volume, everything we have already got. So you just need to substitute and find out the answer as 34 point, uh, sorry, 35.28 kilojoules without the kg again. Because your pressure, your volume, because mainly because your volume here is in meter cube already, not in meter cube per kg. So that is why your answer is in kilojoules. So then your work ratio should be network over gross work expansion, as you have already known earlier. So put in your network, your network should be your heat supply minus heat rejected. Okay. Then put in your gross work expansion work. Okay, you got a ratio, work ratio of 0.29. So to find mean effective pressure. Again, you have to make use of your network. And then your length of your PV diagram. The length of PV diagram is actually you have to refer to uh, between the outermost and the innermost line here. Sorry, I have start destroying the diagram. Okay, so this line here. This line here actually is refers to the volume at point 0.4 and the volume at point 0.2. 
So in order to find out that length, you can take here V4 minus V2 here. Okay, so you just simply take the volume of at V4 minus the volume at V2. Okay, remember length of PV diagram you have to always refer to the outermost both outermost volume points. Okay, so you will be able to find out your MEP. So the volume is at point four is zero point one one two. At point two is zero point zero one four. So when you substitute, you will be able to find out your mean effective pressure one zero six point nine four kilonewton per meter square. Okay, that's all for this problem for for this example.